questions. So does anybody have um, a question for, for one of us or would like anything clarified? Uh-huh. Interestingly, the entire presentation, I believe I heard the word DOI once with respect to how the URL was formed. Mm -hmm. um, there are pretty happy quantity of thermals uh, registered through the handle system and the internet protocol intended to deal with the Right. So the, the question is that during the entirety of this presentation, um, DOI was not mentioned as part of the URL, which, um, once or once. Okay. So Kevin did mention it, that um, he referenced DOIs are in some of the out upon URLs. <laughs> um, yes, DOI is really important, but for Google um, and, and potentially other search services, in our experience, DOIs, while, for, while most of them are well maintained and work, a lot of them don't. So we can't rely on them. And so we need to make sure that we are um, going about indexing in a very scalable and very, um, well, a very web-based way that works well for the majority of websites. And, um, and DOIs, while they provide one signal for us, um, can't be used in the same way as a redirect because they just simply don't have the same reliability. And again, while most of them do work well, a lot of them don't get maintained. And we see that pretty frequently. So um, that's, that's generally why we recommend 301 redirects over just simply using DOIs to resolve from an old site to a new site. So does that make sense? Well, DOI is not the same protocol and it's not the same purpose as a redirect. Handle system and Right, but oftentimes publishers don't maintain them. And so if we were to use them just on the whole, there would be a lot of problems and people not getting to the content that they wanted originally because a publisher just simply didn't keep up um, the use of DOIs or uh, maintain the infrastructure that's building and supporting them. So again, some publishers do a really great job of it. Do you talk to Crossroads about that? We do. Okay. Um, we have, Anurag has had many conversations with them in the past, um, but again, we have to build things for scale and we need to use what works the best for a very large scale system that has to accommodate many, many varieties of setups. And the best way for us to do that is to use the traditional HTTP protocols, which include 301s. Uh-huh. Um, in the presentation, you talked about the DOI and the DOI mentioned the open access publishing. Is that just a non-issue since it's all free, so you call it into discussion? Um, <laughs> for open access content where we see issues is when the URLs change and redirects are not in place. That's the, the crux point for open access because obviously the content is free so we will end up picking it up and, and indexing it in its entirety at some point but if open access journals move um, we still have those legacy URLs in our system it's in some fashion. And for scholars, it, we do our index updates every three to six months. And for existing URLs in that system, if you make changes to them, they won't be indexed and available for three to six months. And so you've got that, that lag time. And that's where and we see quite a few problems where redirects fail, um, there were 404s, content drops out. In Scholar, we won't refresh that entire index because there's so much content and it is a pretty laborious process. We just can't do it as quickly as we can adding new content. New content picked up within days. But the existing content, if URLs are changed, and the appropriate steps aren't taken, then there could be a six months period of time where, where those old URLs can't be found. Does anybody else have any other questions? Yes? Louise, could you talk a little bit more about the meta tags you use? Um, 
No, no. <laughs> o only, only because I'm not that technical. Um, so uh, the the point of the meta tags, as I was told by the engineer who developed them, uh, is that the when when the meta tags were first identified as a means for uh, the crawl, that um, Dublin Core was actually the the way to go. And uh, that was the, the, that's what people started to use. Uh, but in our discussions with Google, we found that uh, they were adequate but not ideal and not optimized. And so the high wire tags have been uh, over time, I mean since 2000, uh, been, uh, been changing and evolving in order to maximize the, uh, the Google attention that they get and so that there, there is no ambiguity. Um, and so I, 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 that's about all I can say about them at this point. I'm happy to answer more questions and, and refer to other people. Yes? If I put metadata in my PDF, the metadata is on the core metadata stuff in Google, look at that metadata or does it just blast through and read the whole text? Because I, I, I put a lot of metadata in my PDF, so I waste too much time. Um, not necessarily for Scholar. We will pick up metadata that we can find for Scholar. It's best if it's in the HTML of the page, the landing page for that particular right. article. Well, I have right. Full text PDFs. Right. So if you were to include that in the PDF in the format that, that we're looking for, then we could pick it up. What's the format you're looking for? I mean, there's. It's. Um, <laughs> because Acumet has their own metadata stuff, and you can put double core stuff in there, and then you can just put other, other crap. Right, right. Which one are you looking for? Well, I think we'd have to take a look at how you're doing it. But there's um, no like standard. Okay. This, yeah, the standard tags truly are meant for HTML pages. Right. For PDFs, it's it's slightly um, well, it's slightly different because there are, are some other options there. So if you have questions about that okay. um, and need somebody to take a look at it, then then let me know. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So there, I heard a couple of things. Um, thank you for all the presentations today. But I heard I heard some important things that kind of perked my interest a little bit in sort of with regard to um, early warning to the publishers prior to de-indexing. Mm -hmm. In some cases, in, in in Louise's presentation, it sounded like there was clear and early warning and a dialogue, and whereas in Kevin's, it sounded like at some point it just disappeared. And so I was wondering if there was an established protocol and outreach program into, into the publisher and the business community? We try to inform publishers ahead of time as, as often as we can. But because Google has gotten so large, and it, they're just the web search team that governs Google.com, we don't work with them quite as closely as we used to when we were really small. Um, so they have a lot of automated processes in place. We try to get them to tell us so we can, we can get out in front of problems, but sometimes we just can't. And so it, we try to let folks know when we can, but, but more often than not, it just happens. Yeah, I mean, if I, if I could just add to that, I'm, I'm sure that, Louise, you've experienced some cases where all of a sudden it's disappeared, and you've also had some times when you've been told in advance, same, same with us. Um, one of the things that we're doing over the next few months is we're actually going to put in place internally the same style of automated check that Google is doing. So we're going to be picking a random selection of URLs from each of our client sites and doing checks ourselves so that you know if we catch a random thing that's a problem that we can hopefully correct it before they can. But you know, I see some of these emails come in from Google and from time to time it will say pretty much exactly what Darcy said. The web search team has told us that this is a problem and they've removed you. We're going to try and get you back in as quickly as possible once you fix it. And sometimes it says the web search team has flagged it and can you fix it and we're holding them off as long as we can. And you know, it's nine people, so <laughs> right. nine people against 29,993. Right, and some 91. <laughs> crazy Studied big math. indexing systems that just do automated things. Yeah. Um, a future metadata question. Um, mm -hmm. Where does Google Scholar sit in relation to Google and Microsoft's uh, schema.org initiative? Are we going to see the requirements change in the future for what we need to do? 
Um, we're watching that very closely. Um, it's good for publishers to think about it as well. Um, as far as we know at this point, nothing will change. Um, it could be potentially the schema.org, which is micro-tagging of content. Um, it could adapt in the future to include scholarly article tagging, but we're, we're not quite sure at this point. Um, lots of we'll certainly try, <laughs> and that's. Um, I just I want to reiterate that um, the communication piece is so key, um, and 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 feel free really with questions. Try to get in touch with us. Um, again, you can get in touch with me because we on the scholar team because we are small, and we just would prefer to catch things in advance of them becoming a big problem because when they become a big problem, it requires a lot of work to fix them, to make sure that everything can be verified. It just saves us a lot of time. So um, even though maybe you know people might feel like, God, I'm going to be bothering them or whatever, <laughs> don't, don't feel that way. Because um, it truly is helpful for us to try to, to give feedback in advance of any problems. And, and again, we do work very closely with the platforms. Um, and, and there is dialogue three-way dialogue, and, and so we just want to make sure everybody is, is as aware as possible. Yes? Um, could Luis and, and Kevin, could you comment on your relationship with that sort of the other 50% of the traffic and specifically the discovery services that publishers are being asked to allow their content to be included in and libraries are spending money on? Sure. Uh, you know, the presentation that I gave was exclusively about Google, except that the same rules would apply to any other uh, search engine. So the platform is fully configurable, and the client can go in and just say, "I want Bing to index this. I want, you know, Summons to index this." It's it's under their control, and and what we find is that aside from Google, most publishers don't don't want to bother. <laughs> so. Uh, for the for the most part, yes, Google represents the the vast majority, but that doesn't for our publishers uh, they, they they want it all, and uh, so they want to make sure that they are as discoverable as possible um, because the Google piece works so well. Uh, they can spend time looking at other things, and so there is a lot of attention being spent on discovery services, on library portals. Uh, that's actually something that Highwire is actively working on right now. Uh, within the next six months or so, we're going to see a lot of changes in that area. Uh, but there's also a lot of attention for open URL. Um, because that's something that is very similar. You know, if you're if you're thinking about uh, about being discoverable, not just by Google, it's it's a, it's, it's an entire way of thinking. Um, and so, while this presentation was entirely about just Google, um, it's it's part of our our nature and our DNA in order to make sure that the content is as discoverable as possible through all the new uh, new engines, the new portals, the new uh, the new methods, um, as well as the existing ones. And again, and to Louise's point too, even though this presentation was about Google specifically and we do drive a lot of traffic, um, a lot of these indexing requirements are truly applicable to many other services as well. And so I, I know I felt badly in the, in the, in the booklet it's about search services. Um, and it really is. Um, Google just seems to be a, a large piece of that. But I want to go back to the DOI question. Um, Kevin had, had some yeah, I just, comments to add. Yeah, the, the, the earlier question that we were discussing was why, why can't Google index the DOI URL, dx.doi.org, and I, I'm not going to speak to why they can or can't, although I can imagine some technical reasons for why it would be difficult uh, from a crawling point of view. but. Uh, if Google were to be indexing the doi.org URL, that would only be pushing the problem farther down the line because when a publisher registers a DOI with Crossref, they're submitting the DOI name and the URL that handle is going to redirect the user to when they access a DOI URL. You need to update those URLs too. So if your URLs are changing, then that is not a way to solve the Google problem. It's, you know, Google is simply going to, you know, you're going to be clicking on a doi.org URL, and instead of getting an immediate 404 from Google, you're going to go through handle and then get a 404. So 
Uh, and I guess the, the point that I'm trying to make, aside from the fact that I don't believe that that would address the issue, is that actually by making sure that you're redirecting your URLs for purposes of, of Google search results, you're also going to make sure that none of your uh, DOIs are breaking because you need to redeposit all of your DOIs. You need to update all of your DOIs with the new URLs once you change them. And that will take a certain amount of time. Crossref queues those processes, and for large publishers, it will, um, it will basically slow that down so that the system doesn't get overwhelmed. So redirecting the old URLs to the new URLs isn't just critical for making sure that you're staying in the Google search results. It's critical for making sure that any inbound reference links are also going to be resolved. Thank you. That's a really, really good point. Um, so yay redirects. 301s for everyone. Every URL, granular, granular, granular 301s are so appreciated. Um, does anybody else have any questions? I don't know what we're like on time, but um, I guess we're all wrapped up. Thank you so much. Um, and again, questions for, for any of us, just feel free to get in touch. Because we do truly want you guys not to be unindexed. Your content is so important to so many users, so many people, and it's just so much easier when people are happy. <laughs> so thank you.